welcome to this knowledge clip about Food Life Cycle Assessment, or short LCA. Every product and service, including food, has an impact on the world around us. With a life cycle assessment, we measure this environmental impact. In this knowledge clip, I will walk you through the fundamentals of an LCA, explain what it's useful for, and show you what the process of conducting an LCA looks like in practice. When you walk through a grocery store, you probably ask yourself these questions many times. Which tomato is better for the environment? The ones from Spain or from the Netherlands? How sustainable is my avocado from Peru? Are meat replacers actually more sustainable than meat? Well, answering these questions can be very difficult because there are so many factors to consider, like which inputs and raw materials were involved in the production process? How are these products produced? For example, in a greenhouse or an open field? How are they transported? By truck, rail, airplane? Do they require refrigeration at retail? Because this can become very confusing very fast, there are methods to account for all the impacts involved. One such method is a life cycle assessment. A life cycle assessment is a methodological framework for the calculation of the environmental footprint of products or systems considering every stage of their life. From extraction of raw materials and production through to transportation, processing, storage, consumption, and waste treatment. Every stage requires inputs like materials or energy and every stage may have some emissions. So what an LCA does is that it helps to gain insight into these impacts. It is not an abstract concept, but an operational tool recognized by international standards. More specifically, the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO 140-4040 series, which describes the methodological framework of LCA and also provides guidelines for all phases of an LCA. An LCA is a detailed technique to measure how sustainability systems are performing and it's a multi-criterion method to quantify all environmental impacts along the life cycle of a product and identify environmental hotspots, meaning the phases that contribute the most to the environmental impact of the product. Why conduct an LCA? Doing an LCA gives insight into the environmental impact of a product or production process, which is interesting for many players across the food system. It can also help with cost reduction, as doing an LCA can provide insights and saving options for energy and materials which are used in the production process, helping to make the process more resource and cost efficient. This information is important to substantiate a strategic decision and promote the development of innovations to improve the sustainability of the product or process. It can help increase the market value of the food item for instance, by communicating the sustainability of the food product, and it can help with risk management. So how does an LCA work? There are four methodological steps in performing an LCA. The first step is defining the goal and the scope. In this step, you answer questions like, what is the reason for carrying out the study? What is the intended audience? What to analyze and how? This step is very important because this is a step where you identify the reason for performing an LCA, what you want to use it for, and what should be part of the system that you are evaluating. The second step is the inventory analysis, which is the main part of an LCA study. In this second step, Data is collected, modeled, and recorded in an inventory table. Example of data you might need include fertilizer data, pesticide data, water, and a measure of emissions and waste in developing the product. This data can be measured on the production site, which is called primary data, or it could also be derived from literature or national statistics. The result of this step is an inventory table which is an extensive list of environmental impacts of each product or process needed to produce the food product of interest. The third step is the impact assessment. In this step, the data gathered in the previous step is entered into LCA or calculation software 
to calculate the environmental impacts for different impact categories, which have been determined in the goal and scope defined in step one. Here, the inventory table is translated into impact indicator results. This could include methane, carbon dioxide, nitrate, ammonia, water, etc. The fourth and last step is the interpretation. This step involves a consistency check and completeness check to ensure conclusions are well justifiable and can be substantiated. A contribution analysis can be performed to see which stage of the life cycle contributes the most to the environmental impact of the product. Also, a sensitivity analysis can be performed. And lastly, in this step, a discussion and conclusion are written and presented in an understandable way. To give you an example, let's say you want to know the carbon footprint of bread. You go to the supermarket, buy the bread, and eat it. Before the bread goes to the supermarket, it needs to be baked. In its simplest form, bread is made with some form of cereal flour, like wheat flour, that is mixed with water, yeast, and salt into a dough, allowed to rise, and finally baked in an oven. To make the flour, you need a field of wheat. And wheat requires inputs like fertilizer and water. While the application of the fertilizer is important for wheat's growth, it is responsible for a large energy use in greenhouse gas emissions. Also, transportation is needed to get fertilizer to the farmer in the first place. And to harvest the wheat, machinery is used which also uses energy and emits greenhouse gases. Taking these together, the cultivation of wheat has a carbon footprint of about 0.6 kg CO2 equivalents. The wheat is then transported to a mill or factory to be grounded, assembled with other ingredients, kneaded, baked, cooled, and packaged. Because a lot of energy is needed for the processing of the ingredients and baking of the bread and requires materials for packaging, this stage has twice as large of a footprint compared to the cultivation stage. Then the bread is transported by truck to the supermarket, which has a relatively small footprint. The supermarket stage also has a certain footprint as energy is required to light the shop, heat it in the wintertime, and cool it in the summertime. Then the consumer buys the bread and eats it, which doesn't have a footprint unless bread is cooked in a way like toasted. And lastly, a percentage of bread is on average wasted at the household level. When bread or other foods rot in landfills, it emits methane, a greenhouse gas. Adding it all up, the carbon footprint of a kilogram of bread is about 1.9 kilogram CO2 equivalents. So this goes to show that the impacts from each stage influences the total environmental impact of bread, and a life cycle assessment is a great way to make an inventory of all impacts and process them into a total environmental impact in a methodological way. Some advantages of performing a life cycle assessment is that it takes a whole life cycle into account, so it's a holistic approach. With an LCA, we can investigate multiple environmental impacts, including greenhouse gas emissions, water consumption, land use, fossil depletion, freshwater eutrophication, and more. With an LCA, we can quantify all inputs and outputs of material flows in a way that is trustworthy and provides a sound basis for sustainability claims. It also allows for the, com the comparison of environmental impacts between food products and the identification of environmental hotspots along the food's life cycle. And like I mentioned earlier, it's performed according to international guidelines and is supported by the ISO standards framework. At the same time, we also acknowledge that there are some challenges of performing an LCA. It's a data intensive process and we often encounter uncertainty of the data that is available or even gaps in the data. In certain cases, comparing systems can be challenging. Say you want to replace chicken with a food that has a lower carbon footprint. A kilogram of apples has a lower carbon footprint compared to a kilogram of chicken. But apples have a completely different nutritional composition compared to chicken. If you compare the carbon footprint of each footprint of each food item per 100 grams of protein, then apples have a substantially greater carbon footprint because you need a lot more apples to obtain the same level of protein compared to that of chicken. 
In this case, you want to compare the carbon footprint of chicken with other protein-rich foods like fish and beans rather than apples. Further, doing an LCA could get complex very quickly as there are many assumptions and indicators involved. This is not an extensive list, but gives an idea of some challenges involved. To summarize, a food life cycle assessment aggregates the environmental impact of a food product across its entire life cycle, from production through to processing, distribution, distribution retail, consumption, and waste treatment. LCAs allow us to evaluate the environmental performance of various food products and systems, helping us get closer to more sustainable food systems. Thank you for watching this short introduction about food life cycle assessments. You can learn more by going to our website at www.blancsustainability.nl.